Hallelujah. So, anyway, you're all very welcome today in Jesus' name. And I want to speak to you about understanding authority in Christ. We're all going to take up the authority, you know, that the Lord has given to us, each and every one of us. Nobody is excluded. No one is inferior or superior above anyone else. If you're a child of God, you have authority in Christ. You see, the devil knows it. He knows that you have authority, but many today don't take up the authority, and they rather give him the authority through their negative words and thoughts. Friends, um, let's start off with Luke 10, verses 17 to 20. And it's important that we hear the word. He sent his word and healed them. That's why I never pray for anyone without speaking the word of God to them first. Hallelujah. Anointing is just going to flow today. So it starts off, then the 70 returned with joy. Okay, there's the first key word. <laughs> Saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you, I give you, okay, the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over some of the power? Oh, okay. All the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Okay. You're a superman. You're a superwoman in the realm of the spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. So it says, nevertheless, okay, and this is where pride is stripped from you because you can't move forward unless you see this. Do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Okay. So the demons speak out, they manifest and all that, and we cast them out. We don't give them attention. They will speak out. But we don't give them attention at all because that's what they want, okay? But we cast them out with the word of faith in the name of Jesus Christ. And we rejoice because our names are written in heaven because it's not by our might or our power, but it's by the Spirit of God. So as I said, friends, we're not inferior here on the earth. Many Christians today walk around looking so defeated, you know. They speak just like everyone else. They into all the ways of the world, smoking, drinking, and it doesn't bother them. They feel that God would just wink and it's okay, you know. But friends, God has called us to be holy. And friends, each and every one of us want to walk in the anointing. Remember, there's no condemnation, but it is for those who are in Christ, who do not walk after the things of the world. So friends, God is calling us to holiness in him. Okay, so we need to understand, friends, that, you know, we need to understand who we are in Christ, what we can do in Christ. And, you know, the authority that he has given to us, right, in Christ Jesus, through the name Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. He's given us, what kind of authority? Authority over sickness, over disease, over torment. He's given us authority of all things, okay? He said, over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm us. But do we believe that with our hearts and do we confess that with our mouths? You see, this is a test of faith. You know, in that scripture there, it says that he saw Satan fall like lightning, it's like if you blinked, you would have missed it. He just, pew, get out of here. And pride sends him packing. Pride 
will stand in your way, friends. Don't let it. It's a terrible spirit, and it's the first sin that really caused God to turf the devil out of heaven. Okay. Pride comes with jealousy. All right. And this is why we need to learn to love each other. Understand, friends, that the devil is defeated. Okay. But you give him power through your words and your actions. Don't do that. Don't give him that power. Okay, that's why we need to be constantly praying without ceasing. Keep him praying. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, do you know that we are victorious in Christ? We are more than conquerors. We need to act like that, friends. We need to read the Word of God. We need to understand what the Word of God says about our situation and begin to declare it and decree it. Hallelujah. And, uh, you know, as I was speaking about that centurion earlier on, all he did, he was a man under authority, you know, and he had said to, you know, he said to his servants, this one come and this one go, or his officers or whatever it was, and, and he, he was a man that just believed, you know, and he began to say to Jesus, you know, look, I know that my house is not that far from here, but if you just say the word, he'll be healed, and then he can continue with his, his you know, work for the day. There was no striving to receive. You know, God's word heals you. He sent his word and he heals you. And that's how we can also pray, even over the phone lines as well. If we are in agreement, the job is done. You know, where two or three agree, it shall be done. That's Matthew 18, verses 19. So that's authority, authority. And yet, you know, Jesus wasn't annoyed at the centurion. He was amazed at the faith of this man. He would just say, look, if you can just say a word, that's it. Friends, you've got that word today, a Bible. Okay, inside that is the word that says he sent his word and he healed it. Inside the word is, you know, what, what does he say? <laughs> He says, by his stripes, you were healed. Do you believe it? you believe it? By his stripes, you were healed. Okay. It's already done for you, but we need to believe it. So he even said, let there be light. And there was light. If he had said that without faith, it wouldn't have happened. That's why you see all these crazy things happening up here. It's because it's by faith. It's not by sight, it's not by might, it's by faith, okay? So your words are going to create things when they're backed up by faith. This is the authority that we have as Christians. You know, if the devil knew, you know, he does know, but, you know, if each and every Christian, you know, in this world began to walk in the faith and authority that has been entrusted to them by God, I tell you, there'd be less accidents on the road. There would be, uh, you know, there'd be a lot of people walking in divine health because Jesus said that he came so that we could have abundant life. Okay. Friends, everything that God says in his word is true. Okay. But it's up to us whether we're going to act upon it or believe it. There have been some that have just read... The word from, from Genesis to Revelation, they read it all the time. And they say, well, I've done my bit, I've read it. But I say to them, have you ever acted upon it? Because that's what the Lord wants us to do. It's not how much you read a day. It's how much that is put into your heart and acted upon. Faith without works is dead. And faith comes by hearing and hearing from the word of God. This is how we develop that kind of faith to really move. And, and when, you, when you know, when you grasp this revelation, you can do all things through Christ 
who gives you strength. Because it's not your strength that you're walking in anymore. It's his strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Hallelujah. So, but you know, there is a lady that I help um, very often. I'll give her food. I'll give her money. I'll do my best to help her. But all she'll ever speak is lack. I will always be poor. I'll always have poverty and it never leaves her. No matter how much you can help a beggar out there, friends, uh, if they are not willing to act upon it, if they are not excited or have some kind of faith to move ahead and change their lives, deliverance will only bring back seven more wicked demons, friends, and you would make that person worse off than they were to start off with because there must be a desire to receive. There must be uh, light in our hearts. There must be that kind of faith to really want to, to believe. Think of all the people who came to Jesus to receive. They all came expectant. They all came with a, you know, an attitude that I want things to change in my life. Hallelujah. Friends, it's an ex- expectation. Um, you know, to receive. Don't come here in desperation. Come here in expectation. There's a difference, I promise you, uh, because desperation will just try anything to get healed or delivered. You've got a witch doctor or whatever. Uh, but expectation, there's faith, there's a relationship. And then we know the, half, the, the job is already half done. Hallelujah. So death and life are in the power of your words, friends. And it's important. You know, there are many today that call themselves Christians, but by their words and their thoughts, uh, you can see, friends, they, they don't act upon the word. Um, we can all label ourselves various titles, but it is important that we begin to act upon the word. A Christian is known by the love that they have for one another, okay? Not by the hatred or the name calling, you know. A Christian is known by the love. And friends, we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So the more we act upon the word, the more we see that anointing just begin to grow in our lives. We take up that authority. Praise the Lord. So we're walking by faith and not by sight. So don't be like that lady that, that uh, you know, I help out occasionally who has got it in her heart. Because remember, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So she's got it in her heart that she will always be in poverty and this is what she sadly walks in. No matter how much I try and tell her, please speak God's word. He supplies your needs. He'll come through for you. Okay, that is why there's a part for each and every one of you to, to play as well in receiving your healing. It's not just about the prayer, friends. It's about what you do after you receive the prayer. Are you going to speak negatively? Are you going to say, I didn't receive my healing? Or are you going to act upon the word and say, by his stripes I'm healed? This is it. It's done. It is finished, okay? Honor the Lord with your words. Praise the Lord. And just remember, friends, here's the scripture. In John 14, verses 23, Jesus said, You know, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them. And isn't that interesting? It says, And we will come to them and make our home with them. Wow. Hallelujah. God wants to connect with us through our hearts, friends. Um, So it's important that we abide in him and he in us. Okay. So he does his part. We're doing our part too. Okay. So we seek the Lord with all of our hearts. And um, we have that authority, friends. You must use it. You must take it up. Uh, Because all things are possible. Hallelujah. All things will be possible for them that believe. 
And things won't change unless you begin to act through faith. Okay, all right. I've got some, uh, a few more scriptures here that I just want to speak to you about um, authority. Perhaps you want to take these three scriptures down for your times of meditation. Um, then they came again to Jerusalem, and as he was walking in the temple, the chief priests, the scribes, the elders came to him, and they said, by what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you authority to do these things? Okay, so take that scripture down. Now watch this. Acts 19 verses 15, the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? The authorities want to know who you are. The demons want to know who you are. Jesus wants to know who you are as well. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name, and then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Okay, friends, this is important that we understand this revelation. So, you know, it's interesting, friends, that we begin to act upon the word. The demons want to know. Jesus wants to know. And what's this knowing business? It's authority, okay? It's important that... Um, that, that we begin to act upon the word and to believe what it says. He says, depart from me, you, you, you who practice lawlessness. Um, you know, I, I never knew you. And so God is wanting us to begin to act upon the word. He wants to know us. Are you known? Okay. The Bible says that we perish at a lack of knowledge. That's why, you know, we've seen pastors, you know, that's why I pray for people alone here at these services, because I have seen the seven sons of Sceva happen to many out there, because they're still in the world, okay? And uh, it's important that we understand that, friends. Uh, we walk by faith and not by sight, and you would have probably seen me a few weeks ago where a lady tried to help me uh, do deliverance. And I could see that spirit in her was not the same, was not the Holy Spirit helping me. Okay. So, friends, please understand that deliverance is important uh, when we begin to act upon the word and really believe it. Uh, we're going to see things happen in our midst, okay? And it's, it's knowledge, it's the truth of the Word of God that sets us free. So friends, hallelujah, <laughs> this is my message for you today, and um, yes, it's about the knowledge of the Word of God. So please, if you don't have a Bible, uh, we do have one or two here today. Please let us know, let either Garrick or myself know, and uh, we will definitely arrange one for you.